All right, so welcome everyone. My name is Carrie Hopkins Isles, and I'm the Deputy Director for ICU DDR. And we're really excited today to have one of our wonderful, co wonderful colleagues, I can't speak, um, to teach us about prevention education and some of the key factors there. So um, she was recommended by our esteemed president, Mikhail Miofsky. So we know, we know that, that the uh, quality of our training today will be wonderful. Um, a couple things. I see people are saying hello in the chat. Thank you for telling us where you're from and who you are. Throughout the presentation, if something is not clear and you'd like me to um, interrupt Helena and ask a clarifying question, please feel free to put that in the chat. If you have a question that can wait till the end, then we will save some time and um, offer an opportunity for you to either unmute yourself and share a question or to put your question in the chat and then I'll read it out. And we already have a question. Do we have access to the presentation after the webinar? So um, I know we will have a recording you can watch and Helena, I'll let you speak to if people are able to have perhaps um, a P PDF of the webinar or of your PowerPoints. So with that, I'm going to give it away to you and I'm going to uh, turn my camera off so it's all you. Hello. For some, well, good morning. For some, good afternoon. <laughs> my name is uh, Helena Morelic. I'm from the Department of, uh, of Addictology, uh, First Faculty of uh, Medicine, Charles University. Uh, I'm a psychologist and more than 15 years old, uh, years uh, I am in, in prevention of uh, risk behavior. And yeah, for, for me, it's not a problem to share with you the presentation as uh, PDF. And uh, I will uh, send uh, after, uh, after uh, this webinar to, uh, to Carrie and she will share uh, with you. And for now, I will start the uh, sharing and uh, we will go uh, more deeply to the topic. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, yeah, the topic is prevention education and uh, I will focus for UPC drug prevention and risk behavior prevention. Uh, I will try to explain uh, all of this, uh, how it goes and uh, how it goes uh, in international level or in European or uh, in Czech Republic because there are uh, some uh, differences uh, between uh, of this uh, and I will try to be so clear as possible. Uh, courses in, in international level, I think that everybody knows about the UPC. Uh, but uh, it's better to say a, a little bit in the beginning uh, for uh, the content uh, that yeah, universal prevention curriculum, that it's a combination of essential information in the field of prevention with a focus on uh, evidence-based programs. And as you know, it's supported uh, from ICU DDR and uh, ISAPO also. I think that uh, all of you know that there are a lot of training uh, manuals because uh, the content, uh, if uh, uh, we see here, it's uh, really uh, big uh, because the prevention is not uh, only one type, but uh, it's uh, more, more uh, uh, spread uh, area uh, as uh, 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 we are focused most of times for school-based prevention, but uh, of course uh, uh, we have also family, workplace-based, environmental-based, media-based, community-based, monitoring and evaluation, uh, physiology and pharmacology for prevention specialists and, and um, you know, introduction to prevention science. Here you can see that uh, UPC for uh, implementer series, the courses together have 288 hours and for coordinator series, it's 882 hours that uh, we can imagine 
how much uh, studying, how much uh, learning, and how much time in the courses it it is. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, who was behind? Uh, it's uh, uh, Zilis Sloboda and her team, uh, uh, Applied Prevention Science International. And uh, uh, she cooperate in, in European level with the professionals. And uh, through this, uh, was uh, made through one project, uh, UPC Adapt, uh, the version uh, consensed uh, uh, and uh, called uh, in the end, the European Prevention Curriculum. That uh, UPC, you, you could imagine that it's like uh, more than 1,000 uh, pages so of the information, knowledge, and the European Prevention Curriculum is consents to 170 pages, that it's uh, uh, less than, than this. It means that not the quality uh, it's not there, but it means that uh, in European level, maybe not many people are so open mind to to uh, to go through these big trainings, or uh, or it's a, it's a better for for the uh, environment uh, of of, of uh, European uh, level because you can imagine that there are really some some differences. Again, the content, but the content, it's the same. And uh, as, as uh, I said, uh, it's consent for. And in the end of, of the UPC the project uh, was a handbook, and now it is called the European Prevention Curriculum, shortly UPC, and the e-presentation, the online presentation, and the online presentation uh, was like uh, one topic uh, around one uh, hour listening. Uh, you can see uh, it was the, the presentation um, uh, with uh, the speakers and with the, the note. But as you can imagine, one hour only listening, it's not sometimes so much interesting for uh, everybody. That was the reason uh, that uh, the Department of uh, Addictology and my colleagues uh, decided to try uh, to do uh, more and more consent form, and we call it uh, INEP. It's Introduction to Evidence-Based Prevention. Uh, it's uh, 10 e-learning uh, lectures. Uh, it's uh, the training it's about 40 plus uh, hours and uh, we have all materials in uh, uh, English and uh, voiced over by an English native but uh, also in, in other uh, languages as well well I'll tell a little bit later and uh, what is important uh, for this course is that there are no sharp to start and end date you can start uh, or our students uh, whenever uh, they want or whenever we, we uh, would like to that they will start and, and date uh, as well. There are no expiration because the course uh, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, online and it's not connected with any uh, webinar on, on our site. The, uh, the course is free. Again, you can see it's uh, the same topics as, as you know from UPC or EUPC, the important uh, things. Here uh, there is a, a one a page that uh, you can uh, see uh, about, uh, uh, about uh, the, um, the uh, training. Also, there are some, some uh, videos uh, from uh, meetings or from uh, trainings or lectures. Uh, what is inside? It's online presentation, but uh, also reading materials that uh, compulsory or edition reading or reading to digest. All of them, it's uh, uh, on a web. Uh, in, in the uh, course, uh, we try to show the students 
uh, that uh, there are uh, many free uh, reading materials that you can just download it. Uh, uh, there are also recorded live talks, quizzes, uh, and uh, online tests after each lecture. Uh, this is for to remember the knowledge that they learned. And in the end, it's final test, and they have to go through the test uh, uh, and successfully pass it, and then they, they can um, download the certificate. Here uh, you can see uh, the, that we have uh, uh, versions uh, in uh, another language, not only English. We have Czech, Portuguese, and to uh, uh, Spanish, Spanish for Europe and for uh, Latin uh, America. And in the process of translation, translation, it's a Ukraine version. Uh, it is written that uh, the Czech, uh, uh, there are some specific of Czech Republic and one is uh, risk behavior. And I will uh, tell you a little bit uh, more about this specific a uh, little bit later. Don't, don't worry. Also, uh, the uh, university degree focused more and more for um, prevention uh, education. Uh, my colleagues uh, try to find uh, in some uh, overview uh, in the uh, European level uh, how many uh, programs, uh, study programs at the universities uh, are focused uh, to uh, the uh, addictions field. And uh, in this article, uh, you can read it. Also, they tried uh, in in the uh, United States. And also, uh, these studies in in uh, Africa. Uh, they put uh, all the information uh, in one uh, article that it's uh, uh, avail available. Uh, you can read it. That in the university degrees. Yeah, there are uh, some some uh, curricula as well and so, some uh, discipline uh, as well. The one is the target discipline and speci specializations. It means that there are some general education plus some speci specialization. For example, medicine, psychology, public health. And then it's uh, some primary specialization like addiction studies or addiction medicine. In the uh, uh, other levels uh, of studies, it's that the uh, universal curricula goes through uh, undergraduate, graduate and postgraduate. And you can go through certificate diploma or degree. And also, there are in some universities uh, like lifelong continuing education, for example, summer schools. And the, the third uh, point is uh, if it's theoretical oriented, clinical oriented, and, and uh, research uh, oriented, then there are some focus for prevention, treatment, law, policy, or management. It's uh, um, again interesting that, that uh, the studying uh, about the addictions uh, are going more and more to the universities levels, and some of them are uh, focused uh, only for addiction studies or addiction medicine as, uh, as uh, specialties. Kind uh, uh, in summary of university products, as I said, spe specialized training and education uh, programs, and there's a separate uh, components of uh, existing undergraduate, graduate, or postgraduate programs in different disciplines, typically like psychology, me medicine, social work, nursing, summer or. Uh, uh, or winter school specializing in addictions and dedicated to different kinds of target groups and topics, public health, mental health, risk reduction management, or in others. And 
Uh, another product is comprehensive ad academic degree programs focused on addictions at the bachelor's, master's, and doctoral levels, and similar programs uh, specifically dedicated to addictions. A kind of lifelong education training and education activities for substance use professionals. More about this, you can, uh, as you see, you can read uh, in the, the article New Trends in Education and Training Programs in Addictions at the Higher Education in University Levels. It's interesting uh, how it goes through the time. Uh, it's more and more uh, in, in, in the topic. Also, um, because I mentioned the Czech Republic, in the university level, uh, there is an incorporation of universal prevention curriculum, UPC, into established uh, academic degree study program. There are uh, qualitative process evaluation. I would like to show you that uh, before uh, 2015, you can see uh, the program was more uh, focused uh, for uh, like uh, the the old uh, medicine studies and uh, after uh, 2018 uh, after the implementing uh, UPC you can see in a market uh, with uh, the the red loop uh, to see that it was implemented more about the, the prevention and start to be uh, focused not only for treatment or outreach uh, work uh, and counseling, but also for a prevention as, uh, as uh, the prevention is uh, in 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 the uh, international level and with all the fields of uh, prevention, we can see that in a, in a bachelor study uh, there are uh, not uh, only uh, introduction but also school based prevention, working with families, family based prevention, workplace based prevention, and in a master degree. We could uh, see that there are another four subjects for the students that after five years, we uh, uh, could say that uh, their knowledge about the prevention uh, are uh, really uh, uh, deep. And uh, we could say that, that we prepare uh, future uh, prevention professionalist uh, uh, for uh, work in, in the prevention field uh, and doesn't matter if it will be in the government position or um, in the school position or or in the counseling center and work with uh, with families. And my question is, why all of these trainings, academies studying? We can see here the organization infrastructure uh, of a drug prevention system. We uh, know that there are uh, some uh, uh, ministries that they cooperate. Uh, most of time, more, most of time, sometimes less together in the same topics. Then we have some ongoing training, supportive regulatory frameworks, and of course, uh, resources. We have uh, the uh, local stakeholders that influence or cooperate with the schools, NGOs, workplaces, health centers, and, and other centers. And, uh, they delivered the the at the local level programs in the local level they they work with with the target group and of course from this we need to have some uh, control and monitoring system also it's necessary to know the collection data collections also to have evidence-based interventions and uh, policies 
that uh, that uh, we can monitor and uh, evaluate and know if it's uh, if it's effective uh, in the in the practice and through all of this system we need to uh, have like the same language uh, of uh, prevention and also the the same rules of how to work in in prevention it's important this is the drug prevention. I will tell you a little bit more about risk behavior prevention because nowadays, um, from my point, it's necessary to start to put more and more uh, focused uh, together in, in a risk behavior and not only uh, uh, addictive behavior or addictology. Uh, for now, it's most of times as a phenomenon in the Czech Republic that we are focusing for truancy, bullying and extreme aggression, extreme risk sports and risky behavior in transport, racism and xenophobia, the negative impact of counts, sexual or risk behavior, addictive behavior. Sometimes we put it inside also the range of disorders and problems associated with uh, used and uh, neglected uh, child syndrome, the spectrum of uh, eating disorders. Uh, why? Maybe your question is why, but from our point is that the the, the risk behavior, it's uh, the con consequences uh what happened to uh child uh, teenagers uh, or uh, adult in in past and uh, in some point in prevention we work uh, with the same tools and uh, with the same knowledge what is effective and what is not effective if we are focused more uh, in a, a universal prevention and selective preven prevention, of course, that sometimes if we will call it an indicated prevention, it's better than the professional will be more focused for their topic. But most of times we, uh, when we talk about the prevention, we are focused for for the the uh, universal uh, and selective prevention. Here, because uh, we were uh, curious uh, when we um, uh, uh, developed uh, the INEP, uh, uh, which kind of professionals go through this uh, these courses, and here uh, you can see. Yeah, addiction, addictive behavior, it's 63%, but it's uh, not 100% as uh, somebody or maybe will expect. But you can see that in the second play, it's bullying and extreme manifestation of aggression. And I think that this is going to be the topic uh, number one for uh, all of us. Because most of times we heard uh, from the schools or from, from the counseling, from parents, that the first was some aggression or bullying, and the second starts another uh, risk uh, behavior. And uh, for us, uh, it's uh, nice to hear that uh, our colleagues from uh, international level are uh, also focused for uh, the, the wider uh, wider area, not only for uh, addiction. As I said, that I will show you a little bit from the Czech system uh, because it uh, it uh, goes together with uh, the terminology risk behavior. Because uh, in the Czech Republic, we have. Uh, a system from Ministry of Education on horizontal and um, vertical level. On horizontal level, there are the cooperation of ministries and uh, the government. And in a vertical uh, level, 
uh, you can uh, you can see that uh, there are the Ministry of Education and their Department of uh, Primary Education. And it's uh, established that uh, uh, in uh, uh, every region have to be the position a regional school prevention coordinator. Uh, Republic uh, have, uh, I think, uh, 14 regions and uh, every region have this position. Uh, under this, there is the prevention methodologist uh, uh, in a school counseling as a school counseling officers, and uh, they depends uh, with uh, the the local levels, and uh, each region have some uh, like uh, uh, locals uh, of uh, pedagogical uh, psychological uh, uh, counseling centers that it's uh, public and it's uh, under the Ministry of Education as well. And, uh, all of them, they have uh, uh, for cooperation, the school prevention methodologist. It's a uh, teaching staff member of the schools. And it means that uh, every school have to have this position. This person have to go for two years studying uh, 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 long life studying, uh, 250 uh, hours, and this is the coordinator for each school. And also, it's important to have uh, uh, class teachers. They, they are uh, that they are uh, uh, working in prevention at the school. Because from our point, the the main teacher in all all the classes are important pe person for supporting uh, the the children for somebody who who uh, should cooperate with social affairs should cooperate with counseling centers uh, and of course uh, try to help and show the way parents uh, also there there are as uh, as uh, we talked uh, in the system that there, there are data collecting and we know that it's important uh, we have a check system for uh, recording prevention activities. There are two modules, the plan and the reporting, and, and the plan helps to school make a plan. And after the one year plan, there are evaluation and there are tools to help uh, of uh, 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 evaluate these activities. And we collect uh, which kind of risk behavior is important for the schools from the local level, from the regional level, and of course, in the, in the end, it is data collected for all the Czech Republic. And we could see if it's more about addiction or bullying or cyberbullying or anything else. We have uh, some help for the schools, how they can write it. It's called School Prevention Plan. All of these materials is for free and it's in, in, in uh, our website, but it's only in Czech language. Uh, but maybe somebody would like to download it or help with maybe deeper translator. And this is to help how to, to write it. Uh, it's, uh, it's some kind. Uh, we had in the past, now, now, now it's uh, not working, but we are trying to, to, to make it alive again the the uh, process uh, of certification uh we had uh, the standards uh, in practice and all all the ngos and, and other subjects uh, went through this uh, through this uh, system uh, and uh, to uh, prove their uh, quality also, we try to uh, show uh, who could, in which level, uh, work uh, in prevention in a school or in counseling centers and, and so on. And we have the four level models of education, how many years of practice at the courses. This is also uh, important, and I think it goes with the drug prevention and risk behavior as well. It's evidence-based, and we know that there are uh, some 
uh, evidence-based skills that, that uh, we could say that this help uh, children and, and teenagers uh to find themselves and protect them from uh, future risk behavior because we know that the, the the teenage age it's kind of risk behavior because they they uh, looking for themselves so what they will do in this world where they uh, which is their roles and and so on and uh, for me this, all of these focus on critical thinking, decision making, etc. Uh, it's uh, the same in work. It doesn't matter if it will help with prevention of drug addiction or prevention of bullying or uh, something else, because this is uh, life skills and uh, uh, soft skills or social skills to to help. Uh, 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 make uh, the child or teenager stronger and help to find them. With these, it's just like to show to you uh, with these, uh, with these uh, programs and trainings, it's good also to focus to, for some degree. For example, the kid garden, it's for the a second class of primary schools. It's for seven, eight years old children. And uh, it's good to try to uh, continue in that work uh, and to not only do it like once, but in another way with another technique repeated. For example, maybe some of you knows the program, um, international program Unplugged, which is, I think, spread most in a whole uh, world. And uh, Unplugged, for example, have the, the skills. Also, for example, sometimes it's good to uh, help them and show them a, a little bit through like uh, the biological, uh, through the neural prevention. Of course, in, in, in some maybe international levels, there are program boys and girls plus for a secondary school. If we talk about uh, risk behavior and there is some psychological context uh, as well, we could uh, have uh, another type of, of look and uh, we can see that uh, we could uh, manage the, the boxes of, of uh, risk behavior a little bit different and focused for interpersonal aggressive behavior. But here it could be violent behavior, bullying, abuse, ra racial intolerance and discrimination, extremism, and, and, and so on. Another could be delinquent behavior in uh, relation uh, to material property like thieves, vandalism, spray painting, or risky house habits it's drinking alcohol, smoking, drug use, but also unhealthy eating habits. Uh, it's uh, also uh, the, 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 the same. Or uh, sexual behavior, uh, also another range, or uh, risky behavior in uh, relation to, to social institutions and uh, prepatological gambling, risk sporting uh, activities. In another, view that we can have for all of this but uh, as, as i said every time and uh, it's uh, that uh, there are some causes and that there are some consequences we need to think uh, about it and to work with this it's, it's, it's the same like uh, what we learned from uh, the drug prevention if i say we learned that it's not good to scare the children and also it's the same with cyberbullying or bullying or with spray painting or with sexual behavior risky life and so on and and this is like the the the, the uh, first main stone so of the pyramid of working in 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 prevention and the last questions. Uh, why all of these trainings, academic studying? One part, it's the theoretical knowledge that uh, 
to have the same language of prevention because I think that it's uh, um, nowadays it's necessary to have the same language of prevention in the whole world and doesn't matter if it's Czech Republic or, or USA uh, because uh, I think that uh, uh, the, the internet we are connected more and, and then we can just start to talk with somebody in the other side of the world and it's good that uh, we are in the same uh, ship with the same language as, 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 I, as I said. Of course, to implement the evidence-based in practice and share these uh, evidence-based and these researchers of course, uh, for better advocacy, for same shipping, and for sharing our knowledge, skills, and competencies. Also, um, because uh, through the courses, uh, you can have some practical skills, practical exercises, like uh, linking science and practice. You can find and see the bridge between uh, research and, and practice. And uh, uh, also, um, Practical training uh, uh, is uh, necessary, not just uh, a theory. We need to put it uh, together. If you will just say, uh, be positive to children, but we didn't try it, train it with the teachers, that they, it's uh, nothing. Uh, they, they need it to train uh, as well. For all of us, it's like the same from childhood. Uh, how many times we need to say that one plus one is two? And to 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 learn uh, uh, the skills and improve our skills is the same. We need them sometimes, and we need uh, some um, repeat and 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 to to have uh, uh, some discussions and communications and sharing. And uh, of course, the uh, acquiring practical skills for uh, prevention work is the class family workplace. Sometimes it's different, but in some and other points, it's the same. And by all of this, and, and uh, by all of this, the, the uh, prevention education is arising the standard uh, of uh, prevention education. It's our goal, and if we uh, look to the past, as the field of psychology was once the origin uh, of the field of psychology, prevention of risky behavior is now an important area as well, and it's uh, in the process of, of developing, growing up uh, to be uh, maybe one day, so one of the field that stays uh, next to the the, uh, the, uh, the other fields as well. And uh, there is a need to raise its qualities and awareness. And uh, last uh, sentence is that uh, risk behavior is present in all periods of person's life and the prevention it's uh, in, in uh, all the periods as well. It's not only focused for children. And uh, as uh, we have and we go to the doctor for some prevention, uh, uh, prevention <laughs> meeting and have some dental prevention or cancer prevention and uh, so on. It's important to, to know and to put all together. And this is as well the reason for uh, making higher standards of, of prevention education, focus it uh, on and put it uh, all together. The knowledge, skills, and uh, the evidence-based and, and try to work, it, work on it. And, and therefore, it's important to raise the standards in prevention, education, and work towards explain, expanding uh, this, uh, this field. Uh, from my point is that uh, to, to work on it, uh, it's like to helping to 
uh, find uh, uh, ourselves for to uh, growing uh, our self-esteem and this uh, could be in uh, every age and we know that uh, prevention and also um, prevention education it's a uh, still ongoing process we cannot just uh, stay sometimes i think that we cannot just stop for a minute because then the the train will, will just pass away and and we couldn't uh, uh, take it again because for example if we look only 10 or 12 years uh, in the past that we didn't have a cyber bullying didn't have a uh, uh, behavior addiction and then 20, 12 years later us nowadays it's the normal topic and uh, we we uh, uh, developed it and we work on it more and more every day and this is that maybe uh, this is still ongoing process in prevention because uh, as uh, a human we are, we are still uh, under the risk behavior what doesn't mean that, that, that we are uh, wrong but but uh, we need to help ourselves as well and of course as a professionals to to try to help and establish uh, for others and this is one uh, one of the point uh, as well of uh, prevention education and their uh, standards and the quality. And this is uh, this is the end from my point uh, because I try to uh, save uh, uh, some time for a discussion. Excellent. Thank you so much. We're so grateful for all that wonderful information. And um, we have quite a few participants. Um, I don't know if anyone has a question. I believe you can unmute yourself um, or certainly put a hand up and I can unmute you. Or you're welcome to type in the chat, whichever one you're more comfortable with. So... While we're waiting for any questions from the participants, um, I guess my question would be, if you had one you know, major thing, if you said, okay, there's only one thing we can, what's the next thing we should do? Just the first next step, what would you suggest? <laughs> Think that, 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 uh, I can't say that, that there are one step. <laughs> no. Like a magic wand question, you know, if you could have one thing but, happen next. But for me, uh, for me, uh, my my aim is to more spread the 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 practice training uh, through the professionals. Mm -hmm. Because nowadays I I see that they have uh, uh, a lot uh, of theoretical uh, background, but now I think here's the second step to make uh, more and more uh, uh, life training. Yeah, it's it's more expensive than than just like these web webinars. I know, right? But I think that this is possible, and and it's from my point of the the goal. And I I see that trend in work that I've done where like we took the UTC and we made um, we piloted a mentorship course where we drill down into the skills um, basically what you're saying and then on another um, project we're working on adult learning principles so that instead of if you're teaching people you know how to teach them. Like you have all the information, but how do you impart it? So um, I agree that I think people in, I don't know about other fields, but in addiction prevention, we're always like, we need more training. We need more training, but really we need practice. As you say, we need to, what is something like in um, 
when we really are implementing it rather than just the concepts. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, yeah and nowadays we, we try for, for example, in, in Czech Republic to make uh, more trainers, but uh, we didn't train them in theoretical background, but how to work with these programs how it looks like when it uh, you will be in the counseling center or uh, in the school. It means in in the school we sit in the circles with the partic participants, and they go through the same process as the the children will go mm -hmm. with with them, and, cool. and and they they said that this this is uh, important for them, and of course if what is. Uh, Important as well, it's to uh, find uh, some money resources because <laughs> sometimes it's hard. <laughs> yeah, of course. No, and I, I really like your addition of other risky behaviors. Um, it's challenging, isn't it, that, you know, we, I feel in addiction, we've always been asked to do more than just something about substances and that's because you know we're human beings are not just someone with a substance abuse problem or someone with a risk for towards substances so you know mental health but all these other behaviors you're mentioning and as you said it's a um, um it's an evolving issue um i was in the i was at the lisbon addictions conference just uh last month and there was a lot about gaming, you know, mm -hmm. and gaming as a real um, risk, you know, risky behavior. There was more about gambling. You know, there was a lot more about um, behavioral addictions than I think I've ever seen in at conferences. So um, un unfortunate, but good that we're getting the information and starting to do you know, the research and, and put the information out there. So I see a couple questions are coming into the chat. Um, shall we go through all the modules of prevention of UPC? I'm not sure what that's asking. Uh, it, uh, it, from my point, uh, it depends where you would like to work and for what you are focused uh, for somebody who only want to work in, in school i think not go from all of them but also every time i will recommend okay if you will focus for uh, school uh, school-based prevention also for this is important to know a little bit about the environmental prevention how goes this area through law, through the government, and so on, because it's good to know. And with this, sometimes it's connected to, to family-based, but only to know, like, uh, I don't think so that you need to go too deeply if you don't want to work. And uh, to go through all of them, if you will be interested, I will say yes, why not? but take your time don't go through one year <laughs> but it's better to first then a practice of the first and then the second uh, and so on and then you will put all together as a puzzle but it's my point to to recommend to you from, from my practice because for example i start as a lecturer in the school and i worked in this position two years and then as a coordinator, and it will start to negotiation with some uh, deputies and so on. But it was the process. I think to just our students, they have some information, but not all the biggest UPC, <laughs> the consent set. That's, that's, that's mine. Thank you. Um, beyond the INEP plus prevention, are there any other scholarships out there on prevention, for example, in the Czech Republic for international participants? Oh. <laughs> for, uh, uh, I know that for, for uh, 
for uh, Czech Republic, uh, we have uh, a PhD study in, in English uh, in the uh, in, uh, 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 Department of Addiction and we are going to open the master uh, in, in addiction. But I don't know uh, if both of them it's paid how much and if there will be maybe some scholarships or no or only with the fees it's uh, it's the questions to my colleagues but uh, if you would like to know please don't hesitate to write me the email and i will make the connection with my colleagues that, uh, the only thing i would just add is that we are starting a um virtual mobility we're, we're doing a pilot of virtual virtual mobility in Europe and we will make it um, available larger and what that means is that courses at university that you don't attend that has a course that perhaps you would like to take online let's say your school doesn't have um, this particular course on, pre on prevention or whatever it may be um, we're trying to co create some collaborations where you could take that course through another through this virtual mobility. So, kind of watch for that as well through ICU DDR. Um, okay, so Irina, hello. How is this preventive special? How this preventive specialist in the school cooperate with the medical specialist if it is necessary? Uh, in Czech Republic, badly, because we don't have a, a medical specialist uh, uh, in the school. And I'm not sure that they, they are uh, in a big corporate. What can I know that uh, through uh, our project, uh, my colleagues are uh, in the process of developing the online course for uh, um, practice doctor for for children they will know more about uh, risk behavior and uh, early interventions but the cooperation it's uh, that. <laughs> yeah and I think that um, it's always a goal and it's always a challenge is to get yes. all the you know I whether you're in a school, whether you're in a treatment facility, where, wherever you are, um, I know I always, you know, struggled to make sure we had the medical, the mental health, the substance use, the prevention, you know, everybody around the table working towards the good and having similar goals. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I saw it uh, in, in one international school here in Prague. That they have uh, a nurse and a nurse and medical specialist and they cooperate with the psychologists and and with the teachers and supervisors it was really nice uh but what can i say maybe to add that in the czech republic like 95 percent of the schools are a public not private and of course for the czech government this is uh, about the money So I think any time, uh, you know, I guess my only thing with that would just be to try to get everybody working towards the same goal. You know, sometimes we get into power struggles or we get into hierarchies. So if we can just try to remember and try to get everyone on the page of it's not about, you know, who's right, who's in charge, et cetera. What is our goal? We want to help this student we want to help this patient whatever whoever whomever that is so um trying to have that make sure people are working towards the same goal is always a good start at least <laughs> all right well i don't see any additional questions and we are coming up on a few minutes before the hour so um Helena has said, she has, as she mentioned, she's nice enough to allow us to um, share the PowerPoint later. So um, if you share it with me, I can share it with the participants. And um, you'll also receive an evaluation. So please, the evaluation literally takes three minutes. 
um, if you can just go and, and say how amazing it was. And um, if there's something that you would like to see in the future, if there's something we we haven't trained on or the, more information you need, you know, c- constructive criticism is welcome. And if your university is not a member of ICU DDR yet, please check out our website and go to the Join Us tab, and hopefully you can become one of our, we have 345 universities around the world at this point in 81 countries, and we would love for you to be one of them also. So with that said, thank you so much for your presentation, Helena. We really appreciate your time. Thank you for our uh, invitation and, and thank you for your support and, and, and the participants to attend and for the questions. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you. And I see really nice comments about your wonderful content. So we're grateful for you. And everyone have a great rest of your day.